Sorry, I have to repeat our message. Apparently, the, the microphone wasn't on. Um, this is Henry T. Perea, Chair Rev. And Tax. Just wanted to call uh, all members. If we can get here as soon as possible, we'd like to start our hearing in the next minute. Thank you. All right, not bad. It's 1.34. Uh, I'd just like to welcome all of my colleagues, members here, as well as the audience and uh, committee staff for our uh, committee's first hearing. Uh, just want to say that uh, this committee meets weekly, and uh, we do have a sus suspense file similar to that of the fiscal committee uh, with a threshold of 150000 You know, I just want to say that, um, you know, it's a real honor and a privilege to to not only be here in this building as a member, but to have the opportunity to chair uh, such an important committee. I think that uh, as this budget unfolds, not only this year, but next year, uh, the role of this committee will, will have uh, even greater influence. And so I'm, I'm particularly pleased to be here with all of you and excited to learn a lot and to be a part of uh, this process. And so I'm excited to be here. First thing we gotta do is establish a quorum. And so at this point, um, I'd like to call the roll. Correa? Here. Donnelly? Here. Bell? Here. Calderon? Here. Cedillo? Fuentes? Here. Gordon? Here. Harkey? Nestande? Here. Great. All right. We have a quorum. So the first thing we need to do is adopt the rules of the committee. So at this point, I just wanted to open it up to my colleagues, <coughs> members. Do you have any questions, concerns? Um, We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Sure, Vice Chairman Donnelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would love to be able to support the rules, um, but I have a concern about the suspense file where a bill can be held and essentially defeated. I really think at this point, in um, with everything that's going on in California, we really need to rebuild our faith <laughs> with the people and transparency in government would would go a long way if we allow every bill to be voted up or down. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you. And, and Mr. Calderon. Well, yeah, Miss, uh, just in terms of, of the, the debate, and I totally agree with you. And I mean, if, if I could do away with suspense files, I would also in appropriations. In fact, I've, that's always been my position. But having chaired this committee, um, I mean, every member wants to come in and give somebody a tax break. And there has to be, a, you know, we can't be sending all of those bills uh, when it's unrealistic to do so. 
And, um, and so this is a rule that has been in place um, even long before uh, I got here. I think it was Johann Clay's had the same uh, suspense file. But, uh, you know, so ordinarily I would, you know, I, I would agree. I don't like suspense files either. But as having been chair of this committee, it, it allowed me, you know, an opportunity to be able to help flow the cost because we don't have any money for anything. Um, and also, um, it's kind of a level playing field for all members. I mean, there are Democratic bills and Republican bills, and in the past, um, I've, I always tried to let out, you know, a fair amount. Maybe, maybe there's a little bit more cost to Democrats and Republicans, but we try to work that out. Uh, but nobody gets the big ticket items anymore. We just can't afford it. Good. Great. Thank you. Any other comments, thoughts? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, call the roll, please. Perea? Aye. Perea, aye. Donnelly? Donnelly? Donnelly, no. Bell? Aye. Bell, aye. Calderon? Aye. Calderon, aye. Cedillo? Fuentes? Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Harkey? Harkey, no. Miss Stande, Miss Stande, no. Right. Great, move. Great, thank you. What do we need? Five. We need. We need. Okay, I'm sure we have time, but I think we've got three, four, or five minutes to close the floor. We need five. Yeah. Okay. I right, just move. Move a call. Have, do we? Do we? No, we have three. Oh, okay. We only need the four. Oh. Have three All right. Yeah. All right. Great. We'll move a call on those. Great. So at this point, do we move forward on? So we can hear them. We just can't take them right now. So we can take the testimony. Okay. So why don't we do this? Um, are sergeants uh, calling the other? Mr. Hill is here. Right. I'm just trying to get our sergeant's attention here to call a few of the other members. Is he? Okay, great. Well, why don't we, um, in the interest of time, uh, go ahead and uh, get going on our um, on our two bills that we'll be hearing. Uh, first up was Assemblymember Hill with AB 50. Now, one quick statement I'd like to make before you come up, Mr. Hill, is that you know generally under the rules that we just adopted, uh, both this bill and, and AB 36 would we would be candidates for the suspense file. However, within our rules. Uh, as chair, we do have the opportunity to waive that and uh, to allow bills to be voted on today under extraordinary circumstances. And so those ex extraordinary circumstances today uh, really relate to timing, uh, timing issues. Both uh, Assembly Bill 50 and 36 uh, will have a very big impact not only on taxpayers, tax filers, but also tax preparers. So we are going to go ahead and move forward on those today and have a vote uh, of the committee on, on those today. So Mr. Hill, uh, you're up first. Thank you, Mr. Chair and, uh, and members. Uh, first, I, I do want to thank you, Chair Perea, and the committee staff for working uh, with uh, my staff and myself on this important urgency legislation. And I did want to introduce uh, Gibran Marcel, who is an Assembly Fellow, who will be making the presentation and answering your questions today. I'm kidding. Um, I love the look on his face. That was great, man. Can you do that again? I want to get a photographer to get that. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, you know, I accept the committee's amendments today and I'm committed to continue working together as the bill moves forward. Uh, to clarify, the amendments are referring to federal law to narrow the scope when referring to home sale conversions and using the term qualified disaster treatment instead of specifically mentioning PG&E, Red Cross, or the City of San Bruno to capture any donations that were made as a result of the disaster. AB 50 addresses a tax issue that came up as a result of the San Bruno gas explosion that killed eight of my constituents on September 9th of last year. As the recovery efforts began, PG&E and other entities like the Red Cross and the City of San Bruno began making relief payments to victims of the blast. 
These payments varied from a few thousand dollars to $50,000. As a result, these victims face inflated personal income tax bills based on the appearance of one-time cash windfall. This bill simply provides for qualified disaster loss treatment for these relief payments. The state is not losing any money. This is revenue that was donated as a result of the San Bruno disaster and truly belongs to the victims. The bill also exempts the capital gains from sa home sales to PG&E following the disaster. In addition to PG&E's generous monetary relief payments, they also offered to purchase homes from victims at the value prior to the explosion. I want to thank AFSCME, PG&E for your support in the measure, and I respectfully ask for your items. Great, thank you. Do you have any uh, witnesses of support? Yeah, Kent Kaus with Pacific Gas and Electric Company. We are in support of the bill. While we believe that these are already excludable under, under uh, federal law, um, this does clarify that and makes it uh, easier for the impacted customers to file in a timely manner. I ask for your support. Janice Norman, on behalf of the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees, asked me for all the reasons stated, we are in support of the bill. Great, thank you. Are there any witnesses in opposition? No, seeing none. Uh, members, any questions from members? No, I, I yes, Mr. Calderon. Well, just I'm, I'm, forgive me. I'm, there's some Valentine Valentine Day cookies of course out here. And I, <laughs> um, I just want to clarify something, and I think I, I support the bill, but I want to clarify it so it's clear to everyone because it, I, I got a little confused. Well, this this bill does not apply to any personal income, correct? Correct. It only applies to whatever aid or um, assistance or, uh, I guess, payout that these people have been able to get either from PG&E because of the negligence or from the Red Cross or from the federal government or anything to get from the state. This is just money on top. It's not their property taxes per se, although those are, it's not their personal income tax. They're still going to pay personal income. It's just this amount that they're going to use to rebuild their lives that you're exempting. Is that, is that That's correct? correct. It's limited, and we clarified that in the amendments. It's just limited to disaster relief funds, and uh, there was some question before that it may include and go beyond that scope, but we've narrowed it to that, just disaster relief. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. Great. Any other questions, comments? Now move the bill. Okay, we have a Oh, motion. we can't move. We can't move we can. until we adopt the rules. Right. So what's, what's the protocol here? Mr. Hill, any closing remarks? I just thank you so much for the opportunity today and for the expedited manner in which we were able to come together because this is an urgency to try and get the relief necessary as soon as possible. So thank you and I respectfully ask for your I vote, Mr. Chair, members. We're still waiting for our fifth member so we can act. So maybe what I can do at this point is just offer it up to the audience. Are there any other uh, folks here to speak in support of this of this bill? No, not seen any. Okay, all right. I'll be happy to. <laughs> just for you, Brian. Okay, so what I'm going to do is as we wait for a quorum uh, is I'm going to go ahead and present my bill, AB 36, so we can at least keep this, uh, keep this rolling here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our, my vice chair, our vice chairman, uh, Mr. Donnelly, to take over for us here. Thank you again, Mr. Chair and members. Absolutely.
Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, would you like to open on your measure? Great, thank you. Uh, Vice Chairman Donnelly and members, good afternoon. Uh, I appreciate having the opportunity to address you this morning on my, or this afternoon as my, on my very first bill. Uh, I want to begin by uh, stating that AB 36 is not he a health care reform bill. Uh, instead, it is a tax provision that enables parents and employers to easily comply with federally mandated health care law enacted in March of 2010. Uh, now, there are several groups uh, that this bill affects, I in my view, a very positive way. Uh, business owners, uh, as well as parents, and the uninsured young adults. And so what I'd like to do is read a few points uh, of how this bill affects uh, each of those folks. First, AB 36 alleviates the workload for employers in a number of ways. First, the difference in federal and California tax law requires employers to calculate the amount to withhold from an employee's paycheck if the employee has elected to add an adult child to their health plan for state tax purposes. There is no mandated statutory guidance as to how to calculate the amount. Some employers have withheld nothing while others are confused and have determined on their own how much should be withheld. The California EDD issued a newsletter in late January outlining a method that employers could use but the method leads to parents being taxed differently depending on their family size. Conformity will simplify our, our, an employer's responsibilities and reduce the number of man hours associated with preparing their W-2s. Now AB 36 also does several things to help working parents. I think many working parents uh, who added their adult children to their health care uh, were surprised that their state tax liability on 2010 uh, for their 2010 W-2s was different. The current method suggested that the California EDD to calculate the amount of the benefit taxable results uh, taxable results in some parents being heavily taxed and others not taxed at all. The tax burden may dissuade parents, some parents, from insuring their adult children. Now here's something to keep in mind and something that I learned over the course of doing my research on this bill, and that is there are 30 percent, 30 percent of the total of young adults are uninsured in our state. Young adults have the lowest rate of access to employer-based insurance. As young adults transition into the job market, they often have employment that comes without employer-sponsored health insurance. Contrary to the myth that young people do not need health insurance, one in, six young, one in six young adults has a chronic illness like cancer, diabetes, or asthma. Nearly half of the uninsured young adults report problems paying medical bills. Lastly, I would like to point out the urgency of reaching, to a, reaching a solution to this problem. AB 36 w would apply retroactively to coincide with the September 23, 2010 date that this benefit became available to some parents. That being said, tax season is fast approaching and we need a resolution before the 2010 tax year filing deadline. Many employers have failed to withhold anything and would be forced to redo all of their W-2s for employees who added an adult child and many other employers under or over withheld income due to confusions as to how to calculate the taxable amount. The simple solution is to conform to federal tax law and not tax this benefit. And there, are, there is one suggested amendment uh, that I support that I would like to read into the record, and that is an amend to California Unemployment Insurance Code, uh, Section 931, to exempt from California employment taxes and state disability insurance the value of health coverage provided by an employer to the employee's child under the age of 27. This amendment is necessary to achieve full conformity with the federal tax law. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, thank you for the opportunity. And we do have a few witnesses here in support. Uh, first, I'd like to ask uh, Jennifer Barrera from the Cal Chamber yes. to speak. Uh, Mr. Chair, could you could uh, we pause for a moment? Sure. Um, Madam Secretary, please lift the call on the committee. We're going to, um, we've established uh, to adopt the committee rules or at least to vote on the committee rules. We have a majority of our members here. So I'm going to take another roll. Perea? Yes. Perea, aye. Donnelly? Yes. Donnelly, no. Bell? Aye. Bell, aye. Calderon? Aye. Calderon, aye. Cedillo? Fuentes? Fuentes, aye. Fuentes, aye. Fuentes, aye. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Harkey? Aye. Harkey, no. Miss Stande? Miss Stande, no. 
Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, Mr. Chairman, would you please return to your witnesses? Sure. Great. So first, I'd like to ask Jennifer Barrera of the Cal Chamber to speak. Mr. Vice Chair and members, good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to come here today and testify on AB 36, with the, which the California Chamber of Commerce is pleased to support. As Assemblymember Perea just mentioned, uh, this will provide conformity between federal and state law regarding the taxable treatment of adult children uh, health care coverage. Uh, without this conformity, employers are currently being faced with the daunting task of trying to determine the fair market value for this adult children health care coverage, which, as uh, he also mentioned, is a, is a difficult determination. Um, some employees may have different premiums depending on how many children are already existing on their group health plan, and so trying to determine what the fair market value is for just that adult child um, is is difficult and can result in varying determinations for employees depending on how many children are on their plan. Uh, so with that said, in order to eliminate this administrative burden on employers, California Chamber of Commerce uh, is supportive of AB 36. Thank you. Second. Great. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair and members of the committee. My name is Sarah Flox, and I am here from the California Labor Federation, and we strongly support AB 36, which we think is a common sense bill to conform state tax law to the federal law and simplify tax payments for workers, for employers, and for insurers. Um, one of the most popular and important provisions of the Affordable Care Act is the ability for parents to add their adult children ages 19 to 26 to their health, health coverage, and it's badly needed in California we have 1.2 million uninsured Californians that are ages 19 to 25, and the ACA gave them an opportunity to finally access health coverage. Uh, we know it's popular um, during open enrollment uh, for CalPERS. 27,000 young adults were added to their parents' coverage. Um, but however, due to an oversight in the conforming legislation last year, we don't have conformity for exempting that coverage um, from state taxes. Um, this makes paying taxes on an obvious benefit to parents and their children and to the public health of the state unduly complicated and could be a deterrent to parents further adding their children to, to coverage. Um, so we strongly support this bill. It will make it easier for employers. It will make it easier for workers. And it will give parents the peace of mind that they are going to be able to take full advantage of this benefit without taxation. Thank you very much. Thank you. We also have Gina Rodriguez from Caltax. Thank you. Gina Rodriguez, I'm the Vice President of State Tax Policy for Caltax. It's my privilege to be sitting next to the California Labor Federation on this bill. We, we totally support conformity as a way to ease taxpayer compliance. Use your date for this committee hearing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Permanent for the rest of the hearing. <laughs> uh, ease taxpayer compliance as well as ease the administrative burden on state tax agencies. Uh, AB 36 decreases the tax burden for both employers and employees. And I can't tell you how many calls I got in December and January from not only private employers, but also uh, local governments trying to figure out how to prepare their employees' W-2s. So this bill would fix that problem and put us in compliance with federal law for 2010 W-2s as well as 2010 payroll reports. I have nothing further to add. I just stress the importance of getting this bill through as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can we hear from uh, additional witnesses in support? Mr. Chairman, only to point out that it appears um, that there's going to be bipartisan support for this bill, and there are members that need to to move on, so I just wanted to encourage our witnesses to uh, speak. The bill has been moved and seconded. Sure. Maybe if they can just state their organization and their position on the bill, that'd be great. Mr. Chairman and members, Dolores Duran Flores with the California School Employees Association. We are here in support. Julie Broyles here on behalf of the California Association of Joint Powers Authorities here in support. Also, I'm a parent of a 20-year-old. I uh, <laughs> think that this is a very important piece of, <laughs> of legislation. <laughs> Uh, Nick Luizos, California Association of Health Plans and Support. Kevin Pedrotti representing NFIB in support. Jennifer Snyder representing United Hope Group in support. Tom Bone on behalf of uh, CVS Caremark and Sutter Health and our employees asking for your support. 
Karen Lang on behalf of the boards of supervisors in Butte, Merced, and Placer with hundreds of affected employees asking for support. Thank you. Thank you. Christy Bama with the California Professional Firefighters in support. Janice Norman with the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees in support. Jane Gussman on behalf of the Teamsters, United Food and Commercial Workers, International Longshore and Warehouse Union, the Machinists, and the Amalgamated Transit Union in support. Carolyn Jenna with the California Medical Association in support. Jim Cassie on behalf of the California Hospital Association where I support. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, are there any witnesses in opposition? Uh, any questions from the committee? Okay. Mr. Chair, this bill has been moved by Ms. Harkey and seconded by Mr. Nistandi. Uh, please call the roll. I'm sorry, seconded by Mr. Fuentes. <laughs> the motion is to pass as amended. Perea? Aye. Perea, aye. aye. Donnelly? Aye. Donnelly, aye. Bell? Aye. Bell, aye. Calderon? Aye. Calderon, aye. Cedillo? Aye. Cedillo, aye. Fuentes? Aye. Fuentes, aye. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Harkey? Aye. Harkey, aye. Nestande? Aye. Nestande, aye. The bill is out. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Also, Mr. Chairman, um, I move um, I move to um, vote and send out a committee AB fifty by Mr. Hill. Second. The motion is do pass as amended. Perea? Aye. Perea, aye. Donnelly? Aye. Donnelly, aye. Bell? Aye. Bell, aye. Calderon? Aye. Calderon, aye. Cedillo? Aye. Cedillo, aye. Fuentes? Aye. Fuentes, aye. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Harkey? Aye. Harkey, aye. Nestande? Aye. Nestande, aye. The bill is. All right, great. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Appreciate your support and we adjourn Mr. this meeting. Chairman, let me, you know, allow me to uh, to to just um, uh, congratulate you on your first hearing. <laughs> I think not only not only did you conduct your first hearing, you spoke on your first bill, and um, I just want you to know, since you had those two first, I'll leave you alone. But I'm looking for you on the floor. <laughs>